Christo is driven, he's focused, he knows how to get agents up running, and he knows how to sell insurance. This is a call you're gonna love. All right, everybody, Grady Paulson here, Family First Live America. So excited to have Crystal Bolger on with us. Where are you from? Uh, I grew up on San Juan Island in Washington. San Juan Island in, is that, you said it like I should know where that is. Is that like an island that doesn't have it's like really, roads? It's really, there's no stoplights, no fast food. Uh, boat or, or plane? Boat or plane. This guy came from a, he's a, he's a caveman, as you can <laughs> exactly. tell. So, uh, Crystal Bolger, been with us 18 months. Yeah. Um, last month, his agency um, protected 280 families. This month, ballpark? Uh, we just had a conversation about that this morning. We're shooting for four, 450. Shooting for four, 450. Talk about goals. And his best personal month has been 110 families protected. Christo is driven, he's focused, he knows how to get agents up running, and he knows how to sell insurance. This is a call you're gonna love. So I'm gonna calm down for a minute. I'm gonna pass it over to him. Give us some background and then I would love, we're gonna do two parts with you. Okay. One about you know agency, cause you've done a tremendous job with that. And then second part, if you're watching this video right now, look for the second part with Christo, um, is gonna be how he sells IULs, Index Universal Life Policy. So we'll start here with uh, you, know, you, little back, you know, wherever you're, Whatever you got going on, and we'll go from there. Sweet. Well, my name is Christo Bolger. One, I am super grateful to be here. Thank you for asking me to speak. Uh, we were at the convention, and Grady's like, we got to get you on the podcast. I didn't know it was going to be like three days later, <laughs> but I'll take Move it. quick here, bro. I love it. A um, little background on myself. I uh, grew up on an island, moved to a bigger city, moved to Arizona about five years ago. Um, I had owned a digital marketing company that I started when I was 19. Uh, transitioned over from digital marketing, web design, SEO, all that stuff sure. into life insurance when I was 25. So I just turned 27. Incredible. Um, extremely grateful that I made the jump. Scalability, profitability, opportunity, like all those things. I had been grinding for so long. So to get into this industry, um, to be honest, has been a dream come true. One thing I will say is the most successful guy in my family. Guess what he did? Insurance. Insurance. Mm. So he owned a, owned a company uh, called M Financial, and he actually passed away last year. So when I got my insurance license, it was kind of like the metaphorical passing of the torch. Wow. So that's one of the reasons that I really run this opportunity up, and he had 2,000 agents on his team. So. <sighs> Big goals. Um, You're going to pass him. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> that's the goal. That's, that's the, the goal. goal. I had told him that. So um, a, a couple other things on the background. I'm very transparent about this because I think people's whys are the biggest thing. And you can feel that in people's work ethic and their energy. But uh, I have a big why. Um, I'm clean and sober. I've struggled a lot in that department since I was really young. And, you know, in July, I'll have two years clean and sober, which is pretty crazy. Um, that paired with this industry, it's skyrocketed every single area of my life. The accountability, the consistency, all the things that That's we awesome. talk about in personal development, like I'm able to show up every single day, work six days a week, work on the agency, um, be aware of the things that I need to improve on and, you know, overall just get better as a human being. So, um, yeah, I mean, anything else you want to know in the background? No, that's, that's, I mean... How did you find insurance? Like of all, I mean, what were you doing? So digital marketing, then insurance. Like if if someone was out there looking for other crystal bulgers, like Dude, this guy's a stud. How do I find more guys like him? Like, where do we go hang out to find more reviews? So <laughs> depends on which year. <laughs> I want I want last I want two Julys ago. Okay, okay two perfect. Augusts ago. Perfect. I was in rehab. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, let's see. So I would say. You know, for me in the digital marketing category, I grinded so hard on the industry and I was always around business owners and trying to expand my business over and over and over again, but I could not really duplicate it because okay. digital marketing is a hard thing for people to sell. So um, 
with that, I got around someone that was in insurance and then I kind of did a math equation in my head and I was like, Hey, my uncle built this empire, which is what you had me speak about. I should have talked more about that at the convention, but something just clicked. And when I decided to get sober, I was like, I got to switch up what I'm doing. It's not working. Yeah. Like the income was decent, but I was not fulfilling, um, what I feel like I'm put here to do. Sure. Right? Like I want to impact a lot of lives. Yes. I want to make a lot of money, but like the combination of impacting lives and being able to scale something like my goal is to be a, a Grady Paulson, you know? Um, and this is the business where I can do that. So I hear you, bro. Well, you're, you're going to be a crystal bulger and people are going to say that about you. Okay? <laughs> One day. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about where you're at with your agency because, and we'll get to some sales here, but I think that what you've done so quickly and the way you care about your team and how you get them up and running is one of your, you know, one of the valves of your heart, if you will. Like it yeah. just keeps you, it helps you be. What is it like? So let's go two parts. Where are you finding good quality people to build your agency with? Because that's the, there's two muscles we build at FFL. One is the sales muscle and one is the agency building muscle. And both you can build empires and massive incomes with. And both are incredibly fulfilling. We serve clients. We solve problems for clients and put products in place which relieve stress when that awful day comes. And we solve stress with people where you say, hey, this is a great opportunity where you can sell life insurance and, and get incredibly compensated for it mm -hmm. and so where are you finding great people and what what are you doing to get them running like what's their first week look like okay so where i'm finding great people i think everybody has social media for the most part right but I, in my opinion people do not leverage it the right way it's great to keep people updated on your life and the stuff you have going on but guess why i have instagram to make money like yeah I'm, yes, I like posting my life and keeping people updated, but it is an income tool and it's a money making activity for me where I keep people updated. So for me, the majority of it has been social media. Okay. And it has not been, you know, cocky or arrogant or anything like that, but I've had my phone out and I've been like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. I was in digital marketing. Guess what? I'm in life insurance now. And I've kept people updated consistently where I think where people are waiting for something to fail now it's been long enough where even the people that talk trash about me in middle school and high school, they're in my, in my unread messages like, hey, can I get a job, right? Where it's, it's working. So I think one of the biggest things I've done is just keep people updated. Not too much, not too much information where, you know, people in solar, uh, roofing, mortgages, real estate, they're like, hey, this guy's doing something and I want to be involved in it. Um, another thing that has really helped me is doing promoted uh, stories. Okay. where I'll ask people some questions that they have about the life insurance industry. I'll get a question. I'll post the response of my story if it's a solid question, and I'll promote that. Okay. So then people are reading that. They're experiencing the answer, and it's like, hey, I'm interested. Send me a message. Ballpark, what do you spend to promote the story for how long? <laughs> Literally like 200 bucks in a week. 200 bucks if a week. If it's okay. quality content where I think people can – that's why I talk about my sobriety and stuff because a lot of people – don't where they can relate and it's, yeah. it's authentic it's real life problems where combining that with the work ethic and the transparency like i know people are like hey i'm going to trust this guy because i'm talking about the most vulnerable areas yeah. of my life and it's on my sleeves mm -hmm. so i think being vulnerable with people and and sharing the day-to-day -day of hey this is what i do this is how my day went giovanna who spoke at the convention she did great she, because of the convention, now she's posting a story every single day for 30 days. And she's like, hey, this is out of my comfort zone. This is what my day was like. This is what's going on. Because guess what? The majority of America right now is not helping the families or making the money that we're able yeah. to do here. And I think people need to know that, hear that, and understand the breakdown of, of the industry, what we have going on, and also understand, hey, you got to work your butt off and expect to. It's not just like, hey, I got my license. I'm going to make a ton of money now. So I Got really yeah. try to set the tone with that. And that has brought me so many people where now it's pretty wild from a couple of my mentors in other industries. They're referring me people. That's cool. So it's, it's changed. I had to, it was an uphill battle with the rock on my back where it's like, are we going to fall back? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and now it's like, I'm not at the top of the mountain, right? There's so many more levels to go, but just effort wise, 
it feels like I'm kind of sliding down in a good way where it's not as much effort because cool. of the, the work that's been put in. I think people like to see behind the scenes, right? Yeah. They like truth and authentic and all the things, but they like to see construction. They like to, or the development, right? And when yeah. you talk about your sobriety and what you've gone through and overcome, it gives some people confidence and also shines a light on other people go, I have this problem too. If yeah. he overcame it, I mean, that's a powerful story. I mean, it's a drive and discipline, right? So in that same aspect, when you do a combination of both of just being one, it's being honest, like everyone needs to have a sobriety story. Yeah. But when you go, this is what we do, I'm dialing the phone, I'm protecting clients, we made, we have an agent, you just, people like to see that. Now, does everyone like to see that? No, but the people that don't like it will stop watching. Yeah. And then those that are curious will keep watching. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you've got this tribe of people that are following you and watching what you're doing, and then all of a sudden now they go, I really like to work with you, I've been doing this for a while, I've, hey great, I've been watching, I've seen all your YouTube videos, I'm like, cool, what, yeah. what, 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 which was your favorite, what do you yeah. want, what do you, what's the next step, are you interested in doing this? Yeah. So I think that's fantastic, man. So, yeah. so social media, any other cold market aspects, do you, anybody that doesn't have a, I mean, I mean that's. So I used a, it, one thing I wanna say, if you don't have a social media following, you need to put the work, the effort, and the consistency to build that. And you need to have a conversation with yourself of like, what do people want to see? Like you have to be honest with yourself. Cause there's some stuff I've seen people post where it's like, that's the opposite of attractive and let's just be real about it. Got it. And, um, authentic. But another thing that people can use, I, I use a recruiting service for one month and I bought a whole bunch of leads through that. And I mean, there's an agent that's in the office dialing right now. That's from that. He brought me another agent and another agent, and now they have three more agents. So, I think it's just how you take care of those first Everything people. works a little bit. That's a great yeah. line of the mentor said. Everything works a little bit. And if you only focus on your warm market or whom you know, then you'll never get into some new cold markets, right? Yeah. That's always the goal. How do I get into someone else's, how to make someone cold warm and then get into their warm market? Yeah. It sounds like what you're doing, bro. So awesome. So now, so you've got them. They're interested. They're excited. You get them licensed. You know, they license contracting, all that fun stuff. What's launch look like? How do we get them up and running? So... Thanks to Josh Williams, we have a boot camp that's set up in a process and like we have an amazing admin, um, which is huge, right? Staff. Like that's been a game changer. We had a conversation. I remember we were in here a while ago and, and Nina was like, you need to get staff. Well, I've partnered with AJ. We use the same staff. It's amazing. Um, so that's been a huge game changer, but awesome. we have a step-by-step -step system of, Hey, this is what it looks like. It's on the website. It's a full breakdown. So there's no questions or anything like that. And it holds me accountable too. Cause some days I'm working so much where I'm like, I got to look at this list real quick and, <laughs> and go back. Right. Um, and so going through that, getting everybody set up on everything. Um, I would say the biggest things are after contracting, going through the boot camp. Definitely watching presentations and just like we talked about, you got to be on live dials to watch that. Yeah. Um, I really want people to watch 10 presentations at least before they get on the phones because you don't know what you don't know. And when people get on the phones a little bit too early without seeing the full process, they don't even know when they're missing out on two or three families. And, um, you know, I really try to get people, their brains wired with that process of, hey, this didn't work. This is where I'm going. Cool. So that they don't drop the ball on that. Um, after that, I think the hands down the biggest thing that we have done well, we have, I think, eight agents in the office right now. I get in person and train with my people, right? I've done decent in this industry. I want to do better, but I'm always going to make time to, to work with people because I know for me, I needed that to get pushed out of my comfort zone. I did sure. not know anybody. I came to an event in this room. I didn't know anybody. It was super uncomfortable. Okay. My life was in the gutter. And I take that energy and remind myself, like, how would I want to be treated? Sure. So I try to give everybody the same opportunity. And, and Scotty does that, too, even living in New York. Like, what can we do to get hands-on training where, like, they feel empowered and part of a team even when they're brand new? Yeah. Because that's really uncomfortable. New industry, new stuff, new material. I'm reading a script. I'm on Zoom with all these people I don't know and they can hear me like, is my camera off? You know, all these things that are very realistic anxiety factors. I think um, I've kind of gone through that and been like, how can we address this early on and like get people in? Because if you stick with the herd, you're not going to get taken off. If you're the one guy out here, guess what? Yeah. Every single agent I've that has the I'm too, too cool card, 
I made this it. new script and I'm working alone doing this. I was that guy because I was a lone wolf doing digital marketing, right? Like yeah. I, I've worked from home for since I was 19 till 25, built my own thing. It was a rude awakening and I'm grateful my ego was at a very low point where I'm like, all right, I got to do this another man's way. Got it. So that's what I try to implement with new people and, and really get in the trenches with people because they like that. Like, I, I think the 10 presentation thing is fantastic, right? Yeah. Just This is your responsibility. You need to get on here. This is your homework for this this day, this week. I mean, if you get on live dials, enough live dial rooms, you're going to see a bunch of presentations. Yeah. You're going to hear them done a few different ways, but in the, in the end, you're going to get the gist, right? Yeah. Take control, get some information, overcome objections, present the numbers, overcome next objections, get the app. Mm -hmm. Which the coolest part about this too, anything that I'm telling you guys, I can't take any credit for because <laughs> it's regurgitated from other yeah. people and I just implement it because yeah. I know it works. Like there's stuff that's come down from you, stuff that's come down from other people where it's like, I can't even take credit for my success in this. All I can take credit for is the consistency and the fact that I ripped my heart out, put it on the table and I'm like, we're going to get you guys paid. R&D, rip off and duplicate. Yeah. Yep, I like that. That's good. Like okay, that. so 10 presentations. They got a checklist of things they need to do from contracting, maybe getting software set up, get yep. their logins, that type of stuff. We're going to, it's dial day. What yeah. is this? I've seen my 10 presentations. What does today look like for me? So the night prior, we're going to make sure you have all your leads and everything set up. Cause I've had so many people that right when I'm ready to start dialing and we're ready to go, it's like, Hey, I got to get this set up or phone burner or ringy or whatever. Got it. I have gotten better over, you know, messing up with that, where I set intentions where they're all ready. 8am. We're like, I remember watching a video of you. 750 if you're not <laughs> by the phone and ready to go and that you know that really resonates with me so leads whatever s system or software you're going to use for dialing additional phone numbers all the stuff have your license print printed just in case you get in that situation sure. where you need to set it like preparation is big because when you're new and you need to get paid when you drop that sale it's devastating yeah. And I can't always control that, but I can tell people how to be prepared. Sure. Um, but I'll, depending on where they're at, I'll be in person. We'll get them rolling. 300 dials, right? Two different dial sessions, 300 dials. We're each. trying to, yeah. Nice. We're trying to get two to three presentations each dial session. And then the goal is a sale. Got it. So I, and this was taught to me by Josh. I have never met somebody that has been having an issue where I try to diagnose it, where I'm like, hey, are you doing $300 per dial session? Are you doing two to three dial sessions per day? Are you checking all the boxes? It's like, yeah, 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 but. And I'm like, no, are you doing that? Guess what? They're not. So that's the biggest thing. And when people switch their mindset and go back to the basics, guess what? Two to three days later, or if they're brand new, I think really setting intentions with that of like, this is what it looks like. This is what the grind is. We get to make all this money and have all this opportunity, but guess yeah. what? You need to get really comfortable at dialing, dialing a phone. Yeah. And I think perspective is everything with this business because do you know how many people I know like risking their life, their freedom, their back, all these things to be able to make, you know, a fifth of the money or a 10th or yeah. a whatever it looks like where I think really keeping that gratitude this sounds corny but gratitude list in the morning really set intentions on what what you're grateful for it makes dialing way easier like yeah. we're we're blessed so i really try to bring that in with people and set that tone when they're getting used to this because guess what if you hit 300 dials it's a win it's a check if you did two two or three presentations it's a reps. win maybe, maybe you did 100 dials but you got two three presentations second second dial session you get a sale boom uh, that is one thing we're really good at. Same with Scotty. And I would say all the people that have people coming on their team, they're really good at getting people paid quick. It's a goal. So you, the way you talked about it, I loved it, is you you analyze the numbers, right? So how many dollars did you make? I made 300. How many contacts did you have? Yeah. I had two contacts. Okay, well, you need new leads or yeah. better leads or your numbers spammed or we need to switch something. Okay, how many contacts did you make? I made 35. Okay, how many presentations did you actually get through? Two. All yeah. right, we need to work on your open because you're not taking control. How many presentations did you make? 27. How many closes did you have? None. Okay, yeah. your, your, your script is terrible. Okay, how many closes did you have? 
I had a, I had four. Okay, well, we still need to work on it because we need to get that significantly up. So you look at the yeah. numbers and you have them track, and then you can actually just analyze where the problem is. Is if I have no if I'm not, if I'm made the dial, made three hundred dials on new leads, you should have. 20, 30 contacts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, because 300 dials is actually 100 leads, right? So we yeah. triple dial here. We count that each dial, each di each dial is a third. Actually, each real lead is a yeah. third. Yeah. But you know, we you know we pat our we make ourselves feel better. I mean, nine, <laughs> guys, like I made 1,200 dials today. I'm like Jesus, let's go. But then you're like, well, I mean, he, so he called four different leads, or he called four leads, 100 leads, four different times, and got 1,200 dials. Regardless, we're beating the heck out of him trying to reach him. And when you can't get hold of him, what are you gonna do? Send them to ethos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's sorry. We're gonna we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you, Dolores, and we're gonna protect you. <laughs> yeah. And Janine's gonna love it. So yeah. we're we're gonna figure it out. So, okay. So the goal is to get them in up and running, getting them prepared the night before. Um, throw them to the phones. Get them on. Get them Zoom. First day, first week. Tell that story about Dakota. So Dakota, he was actually supposed to be here today, and I'm gonna say that so he can rewatch this. But what's uh, up, bro? <laughs> what's going we, on? We got dude? lunch for you. <laughs> so um, Dakota is awesome. That dude's amazing. He uh, he was doing construction, and he was making about. Can I talk about how much he was making in yeah. construction? He was making between twenty five hundred and thirty five hundred dollars a month. Um, I got on the phone with him, I had a serious conversation just to kind of set intentions, like see where he's at, what's his why. Um, he has two kids and, um, he's got a big why. I'll say that we have a similar, similar background. <laughs> Dakota says I'm here. <laughs> so funny. Okay. So, um, when he started, right, we had scheduled a lock-in conveniently the, the first day that he started. Okay. So super uncomfortable. If you don't know what a lock-in is, definitely reach out to me. You should be doing them. Highly recommend it. But we all got an Airbnb. We got all new agents together. Um, we get together for three to five days. Everybody's dialing. Everybody's super loud. Everybody has leads. And the whole point is to get as uncomfortable as possible, but also learn as much as possible because you're sitting next to people. Maybe you got a brand new guy over here but you got someone that does 40, 50 families a month as well. And you can see how they click on the computer, the full conversation, right? You can do that on Zoom, but it's different. True. And um, that's what actually changed everything in this business for me was watching someone do that and, and cool. experience that. So he came to the lock-in. Um, he had actually called out of work that day, the construction job. He grinded his butt off. He got a sale. He's like, man, I might have to go back to work tomorrow. I was like, what do you think about calling calling in one more time? He's like, all right. So he called in again. He made another sale or two the next day. Nice. So he's like, all right, I'm going to call in again. And he did that, which I don't always recommend this, right? I'm trying to keep good graces with employers sure. and stuff like this. But for this story, it, it hits. And the third day, he came back to the lock-in. He got another sale. And... Watching the level of belief of someone in such a short period of time where the next day they call in and quit their job, right? Mm -hmm. And are super confident about the process and fired up and like their life is changing right before them. And yeah. they're taking their life like by the reins for once. Absolutely insane. And I've watched that guy grow so much personally, professionally. Um, I've watched the dynamics of his family stuff change, like all sorts of amazing stuff and it's because this business and also the leadership like i can't take credit for any of that i'm not referencing myself just the leadership that we have at family first life like it exposes you to a a different realm of life in my opinion i would agree it's um everyone does so well and that they're doing so well that they actually want to share the truth yeah like i've been in business sales organizations before where you do okay and other people that do okay, that are kind of maybe doing a little bit better than okay, they're like, yeah. I don't want to share with you how I'm getting out of okay and doing yeah. better because then you might take steal my market share. Yeah. And here we've got 2 million leads in the CRM and there's 100 million people between the ages of 18 and 84, yeah. probably more, yeah. but that, that are that are eligible, that are eligible, I think it's 164 million people in that age bracket of people that we could potentially put our product in place with. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty cool opportunity. So it goes, hey, this is everything that I figured out. Here it is. I hope yeah. you do well. I hope you do better than I do because rising tide raises all ships. So yeah. 
I love it, dude. And great story of Dakota. Any final, final thoughts about um, new agents and getting people off the, off the road before we jump to our next topic? I think there's a couple things. Um, there's some specific stuff that comes up, but the most impactful thing would be get out of your own way. There were so many things that came up where I had to do like an inventory, like a mental inventory of, of what I was doing. And what I realized is I was doing 50% of what I was asked to do. And it was unintentional. It was like anxious, being scared, being a new industry, all this stuff. But in reality, I can tell you this, zero BS. My life professionally, personally, financially, spiritually, every single category has changed and probably 10x over the last year that I've been extremely serious about this business. And I check all the boxes every day. I was sick for like three months, felt absolutely horrible, but the level of consistency that I've developed through this business, I was like, I'm showing up every day, six days a week, Saturdays. Like I'm not here to just hang out. Like I'm here to make an impact. Like I, I want my mom to have the coolest house that she have, she's deserved from everything that I've put her through, right? That's and awesome, like bro. that is happening right now. So if you're a new agent, um, my best recommendation would be like really sit down with yourself, do an inventory of where your life is at, write down what you want and what you're willing to sacrifice to get there. Follow through. I love not, it. not for three days, for a year. It, why not? What else? If you don't, life will be the same. Yeah. And if you do, it'll probably be better. Yeah. Yeah. Everything to gain and nothing to lose, man. I love it. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.